Yo, 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 yo. What up, Comic Sense crowd, community, crew, my 3C family. Shout out to you all. We are back again with another episode of a Focus, Final Order, Cut Off, Uncanny Spec, for close of FOC, um, 8 5 2022. Y'all know what time it is. Shout out to everyone that's in the room. As always, I am Issue X. We're going to get in it. Tons of keys dropping in three weeks. You want them. Have your phone ready so you can make your phone calls so you can call your people. This is what it is. So we're going to get into it. Shout out to everyone in the room. First things first. And I will obviously check your comments. Um, first things first, I want everyone to like and follow Comic Sense on Facebook and join our Comic Sense Facebook group. You see the scroll at the bottom of the screen. Check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Follow us at Comic Sense on Instagram and on the Twitter. There is that. Um, and shout out to Pete Mareska, Be Soul Photography. Shout out to both of you. Appreciate you hanging out on this fine Tuesday morning, just out of the shower. So still a bit um, wet, was running behind, but that is what it is. So we're going to get into it. You know what we do. We pull up diamond. We show you all of the things. We are going to show you all of the things this morning. Again, phones on deck. Be ready to make your phone calls. Be ready to have your people. We're starting out with a very big book from Boom, a book that I think is going to hang with grim in potential sales and in potential popularity. Very, very big book. We're going to go to the big daddy of them all. That is your Frisson, Jenny Frisson, one in 75, right out of the gate, black and white, virgin variant of Briar number one dropping from boom in three weeks time. Next, we have your one in 50 Ginny Frisson full color virgin incentive. That is Briar number one from Ginny, excuse me, Ginny Frisson cover full color virgin. Um, followed by your Mirka, love Mirka, one of my favorite cover artists, your Mirka and Dolfo full color virgin one in 25 copy incentive. And then we have a 10 copy incentive done by Yannick Paquette. That is your 10 copy incentive. She is a beauty who is no longer sleeping. Briar, one in 10, Yannick Paquette. Um, then we drop all the way down to your one per store cover. This is the unlockable one per store done by German Garcia. Really cool cover. I'm not sure I'm familiar with his work, but this is pretty dope. And then we move to your cover H, which is your FOC reveal cover done by Stephanie Hans. She hasn't done a cover in a while. Stephanie Hans is back with fire. Fire for this cover. Next, we move up to your cover C. America and Dolfo trade dress. Back order out of stock. Purple triangle already gone. This thing is on fire. Back order out of stock already. Here is your Yannick Paquette trade dress cover B. Also back order, not stock. Make the phone calls. You want to make some phone calls? You want to call some people? You need to. Make sure you have this thing on your pull list. Then your cover A, which is done by German Garcia. It is a trade dress. Also back order, not stock. So what's the deals? What's the specs on this spec? It is written by Christopher Cantwell, artist and cover artist for cover A, German Garcia. What if Sleeping Beauty never got her happily ever after? Instead, had to save herself. Set in a Bruno fantasy world that time forgot, this isn't the fairy tale you know. Eisner Award writer, excuse me, nominated writer and director Christopher Cantwell and rising artist German Garcia reimagined the classic tale as an epic dark fantasy adventure. Set in a brutal fantasy world that time forgot, this is not the fairy tale that you know. Sleeping Beauty has to save herself. And as, as, as you can see by this cover, no games. She's not playing. There is that. That is Briar number one from Boom Comics. Next, from Groom, we have, excuse me, Groom. <laughs> From Boom, we have, we don't normally do this, but we're going to. We have your Grim Trade Paperback. 
see if they're going to let us. Either way, Grimm is getting a trade paperback. It is a Discover Now edition, which means it is exclusive to retailers only and will not go back to print. Let's see if we can do it this way. No, we can't. Either way, Grimm is getting a trade paperback. Discover Now edition, exclusive. This thing is exclusive to retailers only. Um, will not go back to print. If you are interested in collecting the first five issues of Boom's super popular Grimm, here it is. Grimm trade paperback collected for you to see. Um, make sure, make sure you have that on your pull list or you got probably something you'll be able to get. Um, I don't know how many copies retailers are going to be ordered ordering, but if you missed out, if you've been wanting to read Grimm, if you are one that doesn't actually read the vanilla copies of your comic books, perhaps you want to um, go get this trade paperback so that you can catch up on the story. There it is. Grimm trade paperback volume one dropping it three weeks from today. Next house of slaughter. Number nine. We like everything about James Tenyon's universe. If I'm about to write Tenyon. House of Slaughter number nine, all of the covers, everything out of stock, even up to and including the cover A, starting with your one in 50 copy incentive. Um, this is done by Naomi Frankies, House of Slaughter number nine, Naomi Frankies cover. Then you have your House of Slaughter number nine, one in 25, Werther Deladera. Werther has stepped up his art style on this cover. That is your Werther Deladera 1 in 25. Here is your body bag variant, which means this cover will be revealed when you open up the poly bag and remove this black board to see what is actually happening on this cover. And then you have your Werther Deladera trade dress of number nine, cover B, followed by your Raphael Albuquerque cover A trade dress. Really cool cover appearance of a monster written by James Tyne the fourth and Sam Johns artist Werther the Deladera and Letizia Catonici cover artist Raphael Albuquerque Edwin finally comes face to face with Jaws the legendary monster he's been hunting against all odds will he be able to survive the encounter meanwhile we return to the past where a young child faces a very different kind of watery terror back order not stopped there is your first cover appearance of the monster they are calling Jaws, not really original, but it is what it is. Could have called it Moby Dick. So there's that right there on the cover, Jaws. Next, we have Dark Horse, two comics from Dark Horse. One is really big, really, really big. If you're leaving Scott Snyder on the table, stop it. Stop leaving Scott Snyder on the table. Everything this guy touches turns out to be fire and on the low too. No one's checking for the Scott Snyder books. And then Scott Snyder drops fire. We have demons, bacteria. I mean, Scott Snyder, this is what he does. This is Night of the Ghoul. Numero uno. Bunch of different covers. And we have a preview game. And we're going to peep that. Everything back order, not stocked as well. Can't reorder these things. What you can do is make your phone calls. You can call your people. Here is your one in 500 copy incentive done by Francis Manipole. When has Dark Horse dropped a one in 500? How about now? Now. They thought this, but we're going to do five. We're going to do a one in 500 incentive because this thing is dope. Back order not stocked. That is the one in 500. Here is your one in 200 copy incentive by Francesco Francovilla, who just keeps getting work right along with Liana Kangas. They just keep getting work. Francesco Francovilla on the one in 200, followed by your one in 100 copy incentive, also by Francesco Francovilla. Next, we have your one in 50 copy incentive, Francesco Francovilla. See, I love when they do these incentives and the artist decides not to phone it in by doing the same cover, one with the Virgin, one with the trade dress, one that's black and white. They just give you another cover. Here is your one in 25 copy in foil, in foil by Francesco Francovilla. And then you have your one in 10, Tula Lote. We like Tula Lote. We like Tula Lote. That is your one in 10 by Tula Lote. And then you have your trade dress of the foil, Francesco Francovilla. 
that is cover A, and there is only a cover A. So we're going to get into this. This is written by Scott Snyder with art by Francesco Franco Villa. It is back order, not stock. Shot in 1936, Night of the Ghoul by writer-director T.F. Merritt was meant to sit beside Frankenstein and Dracula as an instant classic. But the legendary film never made it to the silver screen. Just before editing was finished, a mysterious studio fire destroyed the footage and killed the cast and crew um, celebrating at the rap party. Forrest Inman is a horror film obsessive who digitizes old films for the famed Aurora movie studio. When Forrest stumbles across a seemingly forgotten canister of footage, he must he might have just discovered the remnants of the lost classic Night of the Ghoul. This discovery sends Forrest on a dark odyssey. He's warned by a mysterious old man that the film's ghoul is far more than a work of fiction. It's a very real monster who plans to kill him. Anybody feeling chills? Very interesting premise. We shall see what the deal is on this book. That is Night of the Ghoul. Next from Dark Horse, we have Rhodey, number one. You better ask somebody. Oh, you didn't know? Rhodey, number one from Dark Horse Comics, also back order, not stocked. Um, this is your Fran Galan cover art. Really striking cover. Colors, pencil. This is dope. Probably digital, but really dope, really dope cover by Fran Galan. Um, written by Tim Seeley, artist Fran Galan. From Tim Seeley and Fran Galan comes this horror saga about nostalgia, heavy metal music, and redemption. More than 35 years after his heyday, a former heavy metal roadie must return to the back rows of America to do a job he thought he retired from, exorcist. But this time, he's not saving groupies and drunk bases. He's trying to save his daughter more than 35 years after his heyday. He is a former heavy metal roadie who is also a former exorcist. Very interesting. Very interesting. That is roadie number one from Dark Horse Comics. Next from IDW. Of course, you already know what time it is. You already know what book we're going to mention. You already know. A book you should have on your pull list. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 133. This is the ongoing. Every other issue is key. We are deep into the heart of the Armageddon game. We are getting first appearances, first appearances, first appearances. Your one in 10 copy incentive done by Will Robson. That is your one in 10 copy incentive. Followed by your Eastman cover B, Kevin Eastman coming soon. As always, he likes to wait until the very last minute for these covers to drop. And then cover A done by Farrell Pay. That is your cover A. This is the cover you want. This is the key cover. This is the first cover appearance of the four new turtles who cameoed in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Free Comic Book Day 2022. Also a book that you want. Make sure you have a Free Comic Book Day 2022 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to get a what will be called a cameo appearance of these four turtles. This will be their first full appearance. This will be their cover appearance. That's what it is. Back order out of stock. Get it. Next, from Image Comics, we have that Department of Truth. You already know. Department of Truth, number 21. Three covers, one in 50 copy incentive done by Martin Simmons. Back order, not stocked. That is your Martin Simmons, one in 50 copy incentive. Your one in 25 copy incentive done by Anand RK. Really interesting. Like this cover quite a bit. Um, very surreal art style, striking to me. And then you have cover A. We're going to go back because there's a preview game we did not do. We're going to peep the preview game. Um, that is your Martin Simmons cover A of Department of Truth, written by James Tynion IV. Artist Martin Simmons, Cole Turner's loyalties to the Department of Truth have been tested time and again. Now that a mysterious murder threatens to turn a cold war into an all-out conflict, those loyalties may finally reach their breaking point. Department of Truth number 21. So we're going to go back because we did miss a preview game. And you know how we get down. We like to peep preview games. So it wasn't Rhodey, then it had to be your Night of the Ghoul. And it was. And here is the preview game for Night of the Ghoul. 
I don't know why we did all that. Why are we going to other pages? We just want to go right into the preview. Come on, bro. Day. So we're not going to be able to get the preview for some reason or another. It's redirecting. So there is that. Um, next, from Image Comics, we have the very hot, very hot 8 billion genies. No 8 billion genies is cover price at the moment. 8 billion genies, number five of eight. There is your Trad Moore cover featuring dogs. And then your cover A by Ryan Brown. Two different art styles on this thing. Really cool. Written by Charles Soule. Art, Ryan Brown. Witness the first eight months. In the eight months after G-Day, when everyone on Earth acquired a genie and one wish, the world has become a very strange place, full of danger and whimsy and more danger, of course. We need a hero for these times. We need the Idea Man. There we have it. First appearance, Idea Man. Back order not stocked. Eight billion genies number five. Really hot book. Call up the people. Have it on your pull list. Have it on your pull list. That's all I can say about it. Next, from Image Comics, Image is having a month dropping firsts in number ones. Flawed, number one from Image Comics. Come on, bro. Spell it right. There you have it. Flawed, number one. Let me just make sure. Okay, so we can get a preview. Just wanted to be, be, be sure we could get a preview of this thing. And we will get to the preview. I just wanted to make sure the preview thing was not just for every issue. So this is your Prinzi one name artist cover. Prinzi cover B. Flawed number one. Next we have your Prinzi cover A. Flawed number one. She got a knife in the garter. Written by Chuck Brown of Bitterroot fame. Art by Primzy. Bitterroot co-writer Chuck Brown and superstar artist Primzy from On the Stump. Great series, On the Stump. Reunite for this ultra-violent, high-octane, limited series that's Frasier meets The Punisher. Jim Ez is a psychiatrist in the Kafkaesque city of Setham, where corruption and brutality rule the streets. By day, she uses words to solve her patients' problems. By night, she takes a more direct and sometimes deadly approach. But when her practice puts her in the sights of an immortal serial killer, Jim finds herself embroiled in a power struggle that threatens everything she's known. Back order, not stocked. She is a psychiatrist by day, a vigilante by night. She is flawed. And we're going to find out what her flaws are. Here is your preview game. Looks very much like the art style from On the Stump, which was a great, great, great book, by the way. Shout out to this creative team. So that is the preview for Flawed number one. Next, Image 30th Anniversary Anthology. You already know what time it is on this book. This is number six. If you are leaving this book on the table, stop it. Go back and get them. First appearances. Um, we already got a character who emerged in that book getting their own title. That is Kaya coming from Image. We have the very exclusive Scotty Young story in that book. Very exclusive Scotty Young story, which I believe will see the light of day in another form of print outside of the anthology. So here is your image, 30th Anthology, number six of 12. This is an amazing cover by Amanda Connor. Issue number six, written by Jeff Johns and Various, art Andrew Moody and Various. Cover artist is Amanda Connor. As we hit the halfway point in our year-long celebration of Image's 30th anniversary, Matt Fraction, Gabriel Bott, and Fabio Moon reunite for Casanova Story. Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor bring back the pro, and Cine Grace presents an all-new rock star and soft boy short story. This issue also features the latest installments of The Blizzard by Jeff Johns and Annie Amutri, um, Red Stitches by Brendan Fletcher and Erica Henderson, Gehenna by Patrick Kinlan and Maurizio Rosenweig, Hack and Slash First Image by Tim Seeley and Stefano Caselli, and Dutch 
and a new serial by Joe Casey and Nathan Fox, Nathan Fox, plus the final chapter of Maria Lovett's All the Things We Didn't Do Last Night and the continuation of Billy Dogma by Dean Haspiel. And of course, Stupid Fresh Mess by Scotty Young. Stupid Fresh Mess by Scotty Young. Really dope. Can only get it in this anthology. Stop leaving it on the table. There is that. Next, and from Image, I told you, Image isn't playing this month. No games this month for Image. They're falling into fall hardcore, like an elbow drop from Randy Savage. Old Dog, number one, Image Comics, tons of covers, one in 250 copy incentive done by our favorite artist, Blink Sketch, back order not stocked. Favorite artist right now, hardest working cover artist in comics, Blink Sketch with Old Dog, number one. That is your one in 250. Here is your one in 25 copy incentive done by Chris Samney. Next, we have your one in 10 copy incentive done by Kevin Nolan. All back order not stock. All purple triangle out of there. Blank sketch. Doing it again. What is the difference between blank sketches, blank sketch cover, and his one in 200 cover? I guess it's got the little image 30 here and Declan and places for signal. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll take a look again and do a comparison. They look the same to me. So there's that. We'll see. We will see. Followed by your cover B done by Marcos Martin. That is cover B. And lastly, we have your Declan Shelby cover A. So, writer, artist, cover artist, the guy who's doing all the things on this book is Declan Shelby. Jack Lynch was once a promising CIA operative. On the eve of retirement, looking back at a failed career, he is tasked with one final mission. This mission goes horribly wrong. He wakes years later to a changed world and deeper changes within him. When a shadow group offers Lynch a second chance at a life of adventure, he's paired with the last person he can ever imagine. In order to adjust, this old dog will have to learn some new tricks. Holy unoriginal line. Very cool story. Very, very cool story. Old Dog is a striking new spy fi series by Declan Shelby. So he goes on a mission. The mission goes wrong. He's out. He loses. Years later, he wakes up to be offered another opportunity. He's going to have to work with someone that he could never imagine having to work with. Probably his enemy. That would be my guess. It is back order out, not a stock, out of stock. We are going to find out because we already made the phone calls. We already called the people. We are getting this book in. Last from Image Comics this month. Certainly not the least, but last. This is Onyx. Nothing follows. It's just Onyx. Um, all right. They want to be difficult. We can be difficult. We're going to just go straight to Image. Is this what we're doing? Image Comics. Now we're going to scroll all the way back up just to click enter. Here is your Onyx one shot from Image Comics. Back order not stocked. It. This is your Gabriel Rodriguez cover. That cover is dope. It's dope. Written by Chris Ryo, artist, cover artist, Gabriel Rodriguez, lock and key artist and co-creator, Gabriel Rodriguez, colorist, Jay Photos, and writer, Chris Ryo, bring you the complete extra length tale of a cyborg warrior who calls herself Onyx. Onyx arrives in the near future Nigeria, beset by overpopulation and food shortages alongside another alien entity that corrupts all life, life forms in its presence. Is Onyx here to save the planet? or in its final throes, help hasten its destruction. This is back order, not stocked. Here is your preview because we always peep the preview game. Lock and key artist on deck. Went through that a couple of times. 
just so you can see what is going on inside the pages of Onyx from Image Comics. That is the last book from Image Comics. And next, we have two books from Scout, two Scout books. Kill Chella, number one. So it has two covers. You're one in 10, unlockable by Tula Lote. We got a Lote cover, of course. Tula Lote is dope. And then we have your cover A, done by Serg Akuna. She's got a rose reef and an axe. Mario Candelaria is the writer, artist, cover artist, Serg Akuna. A group of friends drive up from Los Angeles to attend an ultra trendy music festival in the Coachella Valley Desert. They soon face a bloody night of terror when a reclusive pop star making her big return after five years recruits her most fanatical devotees to assist in a massive human sacrifice ritual. Back order, not stocked. Coachella number one from Scout Comics. Next from Scout Comics, we have Pulp Bites. Pulp Bites, number one, has one cover. It is done by Pat Higgins. Pat Higgins is doing all of the things on this book. Written by Pat Higgins. Art by Pat Higgins. Cover art by Pat Higgins. Back order, not stocked. Two Twisted Tales of Technological Terror. The first, June Bug Bites Back, is the story of an overbearing pageant mom who gets her just desserts after purchasing purchasing supplements from the dark web. In terms and conditions, Jack and Lacey's day of distraction turns to a nightmare when they ignore the fine print. Always peep the fine print, people. Peep the fine print. Paul Bites, number one, Scout. Next, from Marvel Comics. We're going to get into it. We got these Marvel books coming up. Hopefully, because the way this thing has been reading with the Axe books, it's hit or miss when you try to search for them. In this case, no. This is Axe Star Fox, number one. Axe standing for Avengers X-Men Eternals. They are in the throes of conflict at the moment. This is your Chrissy Zello, very popular artist, Chrissy Zello. That is her cover, a very Foxy-esque, Foxy Star Fox. So that is the, the very cool cover. And then you have your Kevin Wada cover featuring Star Fox in his true form, followed by your cover A, which was done by Daniel D. Nicciolo. And there you have it. This thing is written by Kieran Gillen, Art, Daniel D. Nicciolo, and Axe tie-in, Eros, the eternal Star Fox of Titan, the equal of his brother Thanos, matching his achievements every step of the what? Oh, but you know what they say. Come the hour, come the intergalactic layabout who'd rather have a drink at least if this is judgment day he won't be around for a hangover tomorrow this is x star fox number one next we have keeping in line with the x books we have x x-men number one see sometimes these x books just don't be doing the x thing oh well sometimes the issue x doesn't pull off the typing thing. Here is your Salvador La Roca connecting variant featuring Jean Grey. Finally, you have your Art Adams variant featuring Storm. Not finally, but... And next, you have your Nick Klein variant featuring Jean Grey. Written by Karen Gillen, artist Francesco Mobili. The second story, Critical Acts One-Shot. It wasn't her. 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 Yet, I am fire and life incarnate now and forever. Which part of now and forever is confusing to you? As one world burns, can Jean justify her existence after burning another? Back order, not stocked. Phoenix on trial. Y'all know the deal. Phoenix is being judged. She is being judged. Next, we have a very interesting book, one you probably don't want to leave on the table. Um, you don't want to leave these facsimile editions, these reprints, these alternatives to books you are priced out of the market on. If you don't believe me, look at your golden record reprints. 
Um, this is amazing spider. People who love Spider-Man, you don't want to leave this one on the table. This is amazing Spider-Man number one facsimile edition. Yes, number one is getting a facsimile edition again. It is the second facsimile edition of, Am of Amazing Spider-Man. No, 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 I'm sorry. This is the first time it is already out of stock. Here is your Jack Kirby, Steve Dicko cover. Obviously, we all know what Amazing Spider-Man number one looks like. Written by Stan Lee, artist Steve Dicko, cover art Jack Kirby, Steve Dicko. Representing the inaugural issue of Spider-Man's iconic ongoing series, which followed fast after the Wallcrawlers blockbuster de debut in Amazing Fantasy number 15. Peter Parker has been bitten by the radioactive spider, gained incredible abilities, donned his colorful costume, and learned a tragic lesson about power and responsibility. And now it's time for him to swing into action. But can our young hero rescue a crew of astronauts aboard their malfunctioning malfunct shuttle? Even if he does, he'll still end up public enemy number one as far as journalist J. Jonah Jameson is concerned. Then Spidey shows off his skills in a bid to join the Fantastic Four and comes face to face with his very first supervillain, the identity-stealing chameleon. It's one of the all-time great Marvel comic books, boldly represented in its original form, ads in awe, reprinting Amazing Spider-Man number one from 1963. Those Spidey fans out there are going to want to have this thing in their collection, period, point, and blank next we have captain america listen the last issue of captain america first cover appearance first full appearance on the last issue of captain america sentinel of liberty hopefully you have it don't know what's going on with my typing today hopefully you have it especially that cover a first cover and first full appearance this is captain america sentinel of liberty number six we are also getting a first appearance you want this book i'm just saying you want this book and we are going to find out why. Here is your Nick Klein extreme variant. And boy, is that thing extreme. Wow. That is your Nick Klein extreme variant. And next we have your Carmen Carnero variant. Also very beautiful. Written by Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing. Art by Carmen Carnello. Captain America has misjudged his place in the battle against the elusive outer circle and it's about to cost him everything. The century game has been turned upside down and when the dust settles, Steve Rogers... I'm sorry, world will never be the same again. This is... We need to be talking about number five. Why I have number six in here? Because I'm like, wait a minute. We need to be talking about number five. Number six looks like it's going to be dope. But we need to be talking about number five. There is your NetTease variant done by NetTease. Here is your Paco Medina connecting variant featuring tons of people, perhaps cover appearances of people we have not seen before. Um, certainly the Winter Soldier. We know who that is. Next is your cover A done by Carmen Canero. Also a very dope cover. Very, very dope cover. And this is why you want this book. It is written by Colin Kelly, Jackson Lansing, art by Carmen Carnero. The Outer Circle's most recent defector leaves Steve Rogers and Bucky Barnes to the Outer Circle's headquarters and to the answer Steve seeks about the origin of a shield. But Bucky already has, already has his answers and is looking for solutions. Will decades of friendship be enough to outmaneuver an enemy who calls himself the revolution? The world of Captain America is rocked in this can't miss issue that will that will have ramifications for years to come. However, we like the line, will decades of friendship be enough to outmaneuver an enemy who calls himself the revolution? Who do we know of an enemy named the revolution? We're going to find out. Potential big first appearance here. Ramifications for years to come. Call the people. Call up the people. That is Captain America Central Liberty number five. Next, we have a very big book. You can peep the header, see where we're going with this. It is on the header. This is from Marvel, Edge of Spider-Verse. All of these books are dope. This is Edge of Spider-Verse number five. We spelled something wrong. We dropped the E. Edge of Spider-Verse number five, they hit us this time around because it is the final issue with a ton of covers, a ton of covers, uh, one in 25s, two one in 10s. Let's see here if we can just narrow this down strictly to number five because they want to make us look at all of the books. 
<sighs> All right, here we go. 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 Let's just go up to the top, make sure we covered everything. Okay, so number five, the one in 25 copy incentive is a spoiler cover by David Lopez. It has not been revealed. Back order out of stock, not even being revealed. Then you have a one in 10 by Bagley. Mark Bagley featuring a cover appearance of Hunter Spider, a Craven the Hunter Spider amalgamation. And then you have the 1 in 10 Chris Anka design variant featuring a cover appearance of Webb Weber. First appearance, first cover appearance. Both these characters on the 1 in 10s, by the way. Um, maybe not their first cover appearance, but certainly first appearance because I, I like the A covers, all things being equal. Here is your Chris Anka cover B featuring Webb Weaver and apparently the Hunter Spider as well. Features many of the characters that have already debuted in this particular run and then cover a features your web weaver and your hunter spider that is the cover you want make sure you have cover a um like the one in tens as well one in 25 may be revealing something really big too but you want to make sure you have cover a um so it is written by dan slot and various that by the way that was your jose maria casanovias cover uh casanovias has been killing the covers the cover game by the way um, written by Dan Slott and various artists, Bob McLeod and various cover art, Jose Maria Casanovias. Three brand new spiders get their start here. Web Weaver, a not so mild mannered fashion designer and Van Dyne gets spider powers and shows us a very different kind of spider slayer. Hunter Spider, imagine a world where Sergei Kravenoff got spider powers. You are not ready for the most hardcore spider yet. Both of these and Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, the filmmakers behind the Spider-Verse movies, create a new spider just in time for the end of the Spider-Verse. So we don't even know who this third new spider is. We don't know. Perhaps it's the one in 25 cover. We don't know who the third new spider is. We have to get the book. You don't want to leave this book on the table. Three first appearances in this book. That is Edge of Spider-Verse number nine. Hulk number nine. Keys, 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 keys. For Marvel this week, we just went through the last two books we just went through. Feature first appearances. Got a preview game, do we? Let us see. We do not. Last two books feature first appearances. The third book does not want to be left out. Hulk number nine, also first appearance. First cover appearance. First appearance, first cover appearance. Hulk number nine. We have a one in 25 copy incentive. Uh, we got a couple covers on here. So here is your Azrar Miracle Man cover by Mahmoud Azrar. That is the Miracle Man variant. Um, we're going to go to your 1 in 25 Dan Alice Ever After Panosian variant. Followed by your Dale Keown Predator variant. Back order, not stock, but it doesn't matter. All these covers are dope, but the one you want... All things are not equal. Again, we always say if all things are equal, cover A. All things aren't equal. You want the cover with the first, the cover that is going to be key. In this case, it is cover A. Cover A done by Ryan Otley featuring your first cover appearance of Monolith, New Ark, Hawk Planet. This is written by Donny Cates, artist Ryan Otley. Thoroughly shaken by his battle with Thor and Titan's impact on his friends, Bruce Banner decides that his best company is himself and only himself. As he sets Starship Hawk on a faraway course, he begins to reckon with what it means to be healthy and encounters an alternative isolation he'd never thought to dream of. But this alternative begs the question, who exactly is Monolith? First appearance. First cover appearance. There it is. Missed it. There it is. First full appearance, first cover appearance of Monolith Hulk number nine. Next, speaking of Miracle Man and Miracle Man variants, we have Miracle Man Zero from Marvel Comics. So this is the exception to the first issue. We're getting a zero issue. Miracle Man Zero. Where are you at, Brody? There's your dynamic forces, Miracle Man Zero. And here is your Miracle Man Zero. It just has a 200 copy incentive. Well, actually, we have your Terry Dotson variant of Miracle Man Zero. No other variants with the exception of the cover A and the 200 copy 
incentive done by Peach Momoko. That is your Peach Momoko 200 copy incentive. And finally, Miracle Man Zero. There are some dynamic forces options, some graded options, the whole nine. This is done by Alan Davis. So, written by Neil Gaiman and various artists, Mark Buckingham and various cover artists, Alan Davis. 40 years ago, Miracle Man's modern era began and changed the road of comics as we know it. Now on the cusp of a new era of Miracle Man, we celebrate all things Komodo, Komoda, with a who's who of the best talent in the industry. Plus, Neil Gaiman and Mark Buckingham set up this issue and their return to Miracle Man, the Silver Age. That is Miracle Man number zero. Next, another big book, another big book. Marvel, not to be left out because Image is dropping a bunch of stuff. Boom is dropping a big book. Marvel doesn't want to be left out. So what Marvel is doing is they are dropping Spider-Man. Yes, a fresh new Spider-Man hot on the pages of hot on the heels of the new Spider-Man series, Amazing Fantasy 1000 and Edge of Spider-Verse. We are getting a new Spider-Man book. It has a ton of covers. Um, trying to see what we're doing here. Yeah, I guess we got to go to all. Because it has a ton of covers. I mean, a ton of those covers. This is what we're doing. Ah, uh, okay. So, we're just going to scroll until we find Spider-Man number one. Should have had this thing queued. Didn't imagine that I would have to do all of this just to show you the new Spider-Man book, which has a ton of covers and is dropping in three weeks. Should be right there. Wow. This is what we're doing. We're doing a lot. This is adjectiveless Spider-Man number one. Either way, it has a ton of covers. It is dropping in three weeks. For some reason, it doesn't want to show me Spider-Man number one. Very weird. Um, but anyway, there's seven covers, um, tons of incentives. It is dropping in three weeks. Spider-Man number one, going to be a big book. Star Wars, The Mandalorian number four. We might make this the key of the week. Not sure. Um, first appearance of Kyra Dune is what we should get. It's the reason why this book is the first book in The Mandalorian series has a CGC graded option. First book in the Mandalorian series with a one in 100 copy incentive done by Peach Momoko. All of the other issues only had one in 50s at best. This one is getting a one in 100 copy incentive because, and as I've said before, I believe Mar Marvel wants to clean up the reputation um, or the image of Cara Dune. I believe they don't want to get rid of that character. This is going to be, if we're following the story, the first appearance of Kyla Cara Dune. Here is your concept art variant. Huh. Is he going to eat the cat? You know, Grogu likes to eat the stuff. Here is your Salvador LaRocca variant. Wow, she, okay, okay. Here is your Greg Land variant. Here is your one in 50 copy incentive, Greg Land. Here is your Jan Dersima variant. It's one in 25. And then you have your cover A. Done by Phil Noto. Yeah, I remember all of this. Cara Dune should be up in this joint. Written by Rodney Barnes, artist, excuse me, artist Jorge Jonti, cover art, Phil Noto. Sanctuary. After the fall of the Galactic Empire, lawlessness has spread throughout the galaxy. Back order not stocked. You watch the show. You know what's up with this issue. Next, we have another facsimile edition coming for Marvel. This is Tomb of Dracula, number one. Tomb of Dracula, one.
facsimile edition. Also out of stock, written by Jerry Conway, art Gene Colon, cover art, the great Neil Adams. Dracula rises as comic book giants Jerry Conway and Gene Colan begin an epic reinvention of the Lord of Vampires in the mighty Marvel manner. When Frank Drake, descendant of the fabled Count Dracula, inherits a certain Transylvanian castle, he journeys there with his girlfriend Jeannie and his jealous friend Clifton. Ignoring warnings from locals to turn away, they enter Dracula's castle. And set in motion the nightmare's return of its one true owner. Not everybody will survive the night. Tomb of Dracula is revered as one of the finest horror comics of the 1970s, and it all began with this blood-curling premiere issue. It's one of the all-time great Marvel comic books, boldly represented in its original form, ads and all. Reprinting Tomb of Dracula number one from 1972. That is Tomb of Dracula number one, facsimile edition from Marvel Comics. And there you have it. Those are the keys, the specs, the number one issues, the first appearances, the first cover appearances you should be looking for three weeks from today. No DC spec yet, Pete. We're going to be starting that probably next week when we put in our lunar orders. We've just been kind of dragging our feet in no rush to put in lunar orders, but we will be putting in lunar orders next week, at which point DC spec will be added to focus for sure. Shout out to everyone that is in the room. And in recap, books you should be looking for. Three weeks time. I'm going to drop these. How about Briar number one? Got my little notes here. Briar number one from Boom looks to be really, really dope. We like Night of the Ghoul number one from Dark Horse Comics. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for sure. Eight Band Genies number five. You don't want to leave on the table. Any of the Image number ones, flawed number one, old dog number one, Onyx one shot from Marvel, tons of key books. We have Captain America Sentinel of Liberty number five, possible first appearance of the revolution. Edge of Spider Verse number five, first appearance of Web Weaver, Spider Hunter, and a third character, Hawk number nine, first cover and full appearance of Monolith, Star Wars Mandalorian number four, first appearance of Cara Dune. Those are some of the standouts that you should be looking for three weeks from now. So that's what it is. This has been Final Order Cutoff Uncanny Spec, otherwise known as Focus. As always, it is a Comic Sense shut up-ish production. I am Issue X, and I'm going to go ahead and shut up.